You guys want to hear some nonsense? Let's hear some nonsense. All right. So last night, uh, Mr. Musk was very busy on the internet. We have quite the thread here. And I'm going to miss some of it because you know how Twitter has like multiple threads and it's, I don't know. Basically, (laughs) uh, it started off with Eric Berger, who um, is the space writer for Ars Technica. And he wrote, uh, this article is well reported, but let's be real. Vertical rocket reuse is all of three years old. SpaceX is surely saving money on launches. And if the Falcon 9 weren't already insanely cheaper than everyone else, the company could put prices, could cut prices substantially. Um, This was about a article saying that, um, that, so for instance, I I believe it's ULA was, was basically claiming that it would take 10 reflights of a rocket before it would financially pay off. It was kind of the the claim, and that's what aviation was latching onto in their article. Is that um, like ULA throwing shade on SpaceX? Is that what's happening? I, I believe so, um, a little bit. <laughs> yes. And yes. Um, Elon Nerd said, fight. "True. Uh, only reason other than medium and heavy lift launchers are winning any missions at all is due to government intervention. Otherwise, they'd be as Ooh. defunct as expendable airplane companies. ULA Ooh. is powered by lobbying. Shots fired. Yeah." Seriously, some shots fired. Uh, so then, Billionaire beef. <laughs> so someone G on Twitter says, ULA <laughs> is more reliable than SpaceX. Generally, Ooh. when uh, when you do iterative testing, things fail and are initially unsafe. Both sides have benefits and weaknesses, but saying that the only reason SpaceX doesn't have a monopoly is lobbying is just not true. And then that's, sorry, this is like a whole, this, it's just kind of funny. Ooh. Eric Ooh. Berger goes, maybe check Block 5's record. So that's referring to, of course, the Fal- the latest Falcon 9, the Block 5, uh, which the Block 5 variant has a 100% reliability. So What is, what is yeah, what is he saying? So, but the thing we check is not whether it landed, right, but whether it made its payload. Right. delivered its yeah, payload. Yeah, so have they ever not done that outside of since the first Falcon 9? Uh, SpaceX has had two failures as in the operational Falcon 9. Um, they had a, a partial failure early on, but that doesn't... It was a whole thing. Out of what, like 60 or something like that? 82 launches to date. And then, well, but then there's CRS-7 and AMO-6. So they've actually full-blown lost two payloads. Hmm. So, but that last one was in 2017. So, uh, or 2016. 2016. Yeah, wow. Um, and then Block <laughs> 5 has been perfectly reliable as far as delivering payloads. Hmm. So then Elon said it costs less to ensure a Falcon nine miss mission. That's the acid test. Michael Sheets says how much less Elon said last I checked over a million dollars less more over Falcon nine is launching far more often and is the only fully NASA approved f- and is the only rocket fully NASA approved for launching astronauts. So that gap is increasing. So there's a few oh, things right. here. Uh, first off, n- uh, apparently NOAA is not less to ensure a Falcon 9. F- according to one of the customers, spoke up on Twitter this morning from what I saw, saying, like, no, that's just, <laughs> that's just not true. <laughs> Once um, you have Tesla insurance. Yeah. Well, SpaceX could maybe start doing insurance on their own. But then um, Elon's saying that the uh, Falcon 9 is the only fully approved NASA astro- one for fully approved. And I said... What do you mean by only rocket fully NASA approved for launching astronauts? They said, what about the Atlas V N22? Uh, hasn't that passed certification? And don't forget about Soyuz. Um, and Tim, someone else named Tim, says, I'm sure he means American rockets. They go, Atlas V is an American rocket. Well, minus the engines. And by engines, I meant the RD-180, which is its main engine, not engines on the rocket, because the RL-10 is an American rocket. Elon said, yeah, Atlas main engine is Russian. Great engine, but not U.S. Also, their fairing is Swiss. I think interstage and payload separation systems, also not U.S. Fundamentally, Atlas is still dependent on Russia to launch. So this is just like a shade-throwing thing. Yeah. Uh, so at some point, Who I Who was believe... he fighting with? Was it Bridenstine? <laughs> no, no. He, just random he, Twitter people? Mostly picking a, picking a fight with, with ULA. And I'm so some... mad that he didn't respond to my multiple times. That I was trying the Tim Dodd strategy of just reply the same thing to every single tweet he said. Why well, don't do that? You don't? I thought that was you gave no, me the I, whole I do a secret. different tweet to almost every, like, everything that is something that I can respond to with something reasonable. I tweet a, a question. 
I don't tweet the same one. My, my thing was, I don't know if you saw it, was that it's he meant it's the only one with engines named after Falcons. Oh yeah, and, I saw that. And, and then me and, and then and then and then I got the space nerds on me. They were really hot on that one, but they were wrong. Oh, that's funny. So basically, it just kept going. But we did learn so what's some fun the, yeah. tidbits. Here's the funnest tidbits of all: is uh, they are now producing serial number twenty six for the Raptor engine. Oh wow, isn't that crazy? So last year. Let's see. I think the one that flew last year was like what serial number? I don't even remember. Like four or six or something. Like it was very low. Is what flew on Starhopper, and now they're already up to twenty six. So, um, serial number eight says says Trevor. Thank you if if, if that's correct. <laughs> uh, that sounds about right. I, I know that I don't think by Starhopper they were probably like getting to like number ten. So to have produced um, two more dozen since within a year is pretty pretty great mm-hmm. ramping up of, of an engine production line. Um, two a month that's pretty good i'm sure they'll get faster than that yet though um and then so then uh uh siva siva kumar kumar says what do you think about rocket lab's latest retrieval effort so this is fun because we were just talking about rocket lab last week how they're working on uh catching a a rocket with the you know with their helicopter and elon said some of the small launcher activity is cool especially rocket lab downsides are helicopter retrieval doesn't scale to bigger rockets and is highly weather dependent also propulsive landing is needed for moon mars that said it's probably the right move for small low earth orbit vehicles and, uh, i mean that's like you know wh- wh- what do you think about uh steve nash he's really good at you know jump shots you're like yeah that's cool but you're not going to be able to dunk <laughs> like yeah but he's still making baskets like yeah but he can't you know dunk in your face <laughs> 360 round the back dunk I know, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, that's kind of cool, but check this out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that is pretty much what he did right there. <laughs> um, so I, this is when I interjected with my own little spice. Uh, I just caught up with Rocket Lab's Peter Beck about helicopter retrieving, and it's very exciting. They're making great progress. I hope I can catch up with you again someday about Starship manufacturing. See hey, what baby. I did there? Mm. He goes, I have great respect for anyone who gets a rocket into orbit. It's very hard. I'm spending crazy hours on Starship design production. It's truly an honor to work with such great engineers. Seal number four is almost done. So you'll see. I keep I keep prodding. It's insane how quick serial number four is coming together. It makes sense when you build a factory around your rockets and not vice versa. Because they're literally building their factory around their rockets. Like, they're not building their rockets inside of a factory yet. They're, like, building their factory around their rockets. And... Cool to see mass manufacturing taking an early lead in development versus one-off prototyping. I hope when it's closer to done, I can get a tour from you, winky face. Ooh. Hoping to get this. Production hey, is by far the hard part. That This is what Elon's saying, sorry. That's why I'm not super day. worried about the early Starship failure. Initial serial numbers are suboptimal, so would be lawn ornaments if they survived. That said, as lawn ornaments go, they'd be pretty sweet. This is when Bjorn... Bjorn dang it, I messed it up. Uh, Njordog, uh, who is a patron member, uh, said, give Tim a tour. And I go, it'd be so cool to do a tour of Hawthorne versus Boca Chica to see the differences in philosophies between early SpaceX and current. Boca Chica is a giant playground test bed, which is so cool. To that, Elon said, sure. Elon came in like, yeah, big daddy. It only took me like eight times of saying, wink, give me a tour. (laughs) <laughs> That's just Elon saying, dude, I got to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, so this will happen. That's how Elon the stuff comes works. in like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this no, means cool. I can, that's cool. hopefully it means I can film in old versus new SpaceX factories and get a chance to see like how they actually build their rockets. When the world's not over, I guess. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I was pretty excited. Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.